Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be covering this dynamic paint effect where you can basically create rain on a surface. It's pretty simple to do, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Alrighty, so in a new Blender file here, I'm just gonna delete the cube, delete the light. I'm just gonna save this as dynamic paint tutorial rain. Cool, so go ahead and save that. All right, so let's go ahead and add in our plane. So just add in a mesh plane, scale it up by five. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna subdivide this and I'm gonna subdivide this like 30 times. And we can come back if we need more later, but that should be good for now. Go ahead to your uh, dynamic paint tab, add a dynamic paint canvas, click on add canvas and then make this waves surface type is going to be waves and then we can come back to this later but for now the cache should be shut uh, excuse me set up to be uh, up to frame 250 so right now you're going to see nothing's happening real quick just a, a friendly reminder if you guys add a shape and you add a dynamic paint brush to this and then you press play here and you move this on the surface you're going to see that nothing's happening you have to click add brush make sure you click that again you have to do the same thing with the canvas and if you go back and we play this back now you're going to see we have uh, some movement on our canvas here, which is good. So this is pretty much how dynamic paint works. You have the canvas, which is the plane, and then you have the thing hitting the canvas. So what we need to do is we need to set up a raindrop. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to make a raindrop out of something very simple. So in our case, you can pretty much use anything, but I'm going to use a plane. I'm going to drag it up like this. I'm going to rotate it on the Y 90 degrees, and then I'm going to scale it on the Y like this scale it down a little bit, and we'll just pretend for right now that this is our raindrop. I'm gonna move this off to the side. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a particle emitter. So I'm gonna take this plane, or actually I'm going to add a new plane, sorry, scale it up on the top here, just about that size is fine. You can make it the same size as the bottom plane if you want, this should be fine. Uh, go ahead and click on our particle emitter, add a new particle emitter, and then if you press play, we should have our particles falling down. And now what we need to do is we actually need to make these particles the rain that we just made here on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, go to where it says render, and where it says render as halo, we're actually gonna click that and choose object. And then we're gonna use this little eyedropper tool to select our plane. And now you can see that it's falling down, but it's not in the right orientation. So I am actually going to rotate this on the Y, 90 degrees, and then I'm gonna rotate it again on the 90 just pretty much keep rotating it until it's proper hold on why is it not up and down should be correct oh you know what i don't think i have rotation that's right i'm sorry guys you have to click on object rotation over here for the instance there we go that's good so as long as this is straight up and down these should fall straight up and down just like that we are good to go there guys so now that this is all set up you'll see it's not really interacting with our dynamic paint so how do we actually make this interact? So we're actually going to have to do a couple of things. Well, first of all, we're gonna have to click on our dynamic paint and we're gonna to have to go over to, or sorry, we're gonna to have to click on our uh, emitter and then we're gonna to go to dynamic paint brush, add the brush, and instead of mesh volume right here, you're gonna to wanna to do particle system, okay? Make sure you're saving as you're going. Now, if you press play, you're gonna notice nothing is happening at the moment because you actually have to select the particle system. So right here where it says particle system, click on that, select your particle system, and now if we play this back, we should have some movement. Perfect, so as you guys can see, the rain is now interacting with our surface, but it's still a little bit jaggedy. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale this up by two, okay? I'm also going to right, uh, go into edit mode and I'm gonna subdivide this again, give it some more subdivisions. I'm also gonna shade it smooth and I'm gonna add another subdiv uh, modifier after dynamic paint. Now when we play this back, we should have something a little bit more realistic. Now this is looking really, really good. I'm also gonna scale up my particle emitter too. Let's go ahead and bring this back to frame one and play this back. Now as you can see, we have a rain effect. Now this is looking pretty good, but this is where you can kind of come in here and adjust all of your settings. You can make your rain bigger or smaller. So if I made my rain bigger like this, you'll see that you're gonna get a completely different effect here. Um, and again, with this shape right here, you guys can pretty much do anything you want. You can subdivide this, you can pull all this in at the top, make it look more like kind of rounded out. You could even give this a subdivision surface, right? Like that, shade that smooth, and now you have this kind of 
rain like drop looking thing. You can also make it a 3D object. Right now it's just a plane. But again, this is how you create this rain effect. It's actually not too hard to do. Now, once you kind of have something you like, you can do some basic shading. So maybe I'll go into the rendered view here. I'll go to cycles, GPU, I'll throw on like an HDRI. And then let's see, maybe like, I don't know, this one might work. That's fine. And then you could go ahead and click on this floor here and you could just give it like a metallic surface with a low roughness something like that. Now with this emitter here, we don't really want this to show. So I'm actually going to go to my settings here, go to viewport display and uncheck view emitter. Um, and then you should be good to go here or I'm sorry, go to render show emitter. There we go. And then make sure you click off here and you should be good to go. Now you're not going to see the plane on either the render or the viewport. And then when you play this back, it's going to look pretty good. You're also going to want to hide this as well your actual emitter object. And this is looking fantastic. So right now it looks pretty good. You can pretty much add any environment you want. You can adjust your dynamic paint settings to get something closer to what you're looking for if this isn't it. Um, although, like I said, the actual angle of which you're looking at your scene is also gonna change the way that this rain looks as well. And your rain itself, you guys go back to our original raindrop. Remember, you're gonna probably wanna give that a different material maybe a glass material with an IOR of 1.33 and zero roughness. Now what that's gonna do is it's basically going to make this the same IOR as water. So as you guys can see, it's looking pretty good. And then if you guys actually do go to render this out, you're going to wanna enable motion blur as well. So it looks even more realistic. Now remember, the more you scale this up, the different effect you're gonna get. So like right now, we're probably gonna get a completely different effect that's a little bit more subtle. You can still see it, but it's a little more subtle. So the, depending on the amount of subdivisions, depending on your modifiers, your actual material itself, uh, but basically you're set up and good to go. But depending on what you choose, you're gonna get completely different results You know, every single time here. This is looking pretty good. And if you really wanted to, again, you guys can completely change your HDRI, maybe like something like this. Looks pretty cool, right? Again, that is pretty much it, guys. Um, that is how you create rain very quickly in blender with dynamic paint particle emitter and again the particle emitter basically acts as a brush um, if you guys choose all the settings that i have you'll get this exact result um, i pretty much left most of the particle emitter settings to default if you guys think it's too much rain you can reduce the amount of particles you guys can adjust everything as you need to and i just thought this was a really cool effect and a lot of people wanted this covered there you go it has been covered um, again, don't forget you can keep adjusting these settings. I'm not going to go through every setting. You guys can adjust them as you like. Most of the most important settings are going to be under your canvas, such as dampen, damping, time scale, and stuff like that. For example, if we turned damping up to like, instead of 0 0.04, like 0 0.1, then the part or the uh, raindrops would like disperse and then they would like quickly dampen away and they would like flatten out. So, like right now, the raindrops go pretty far like the ripples come out far, but if you turned up that damping value, they would actually slow down very quickly and like uh, disperse quicker, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something, and I'm really excited to see if you guys actually use something uh, that I taught today in your future project. I do hope this helps, and I hope that um, I explained it clearly for you guys. All right, guys, have a great day. I will see you in the next tutorial.